Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Premier League and Eredivisie weekend and for me it was actually a hard choice what to wear initially because I thought maybe I could give this City jersey its first outing on the channel and actually pull it on for the very first time ever. I have only been fawning over it but nothing more than that. Um, so I thought that and then I nah, shall I wear Ajax? You know, it was kind of a weekend where I would, didn't really know what was the outstanding thing. But then when I put up the wall and saw that Arsenal would have ended up where Everton, the blue one is up there, and they actually won a big game, I said, you should go with the big game of the weekend and take the winner from that one. And so I'm wearing Arsenal because I think they also fully deserve uh, it the honor of being kind of a little bit front and center for once um, They are still in the mid table, but I think the performance that they pulled out was rather rather good And as I said, a Rabona goal is not enough for Spurs to uh, Overcome Arsenal In any case even worse. So I mean uh, Arsenal fully deserved that one. I mean Spurs except for the Rabona goal No there was not much coming from Spurs, except very, very, very late. But we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. Um, other headlines, I mean, uh, Leicester steamrolling Sheffield United. That was definitely a ha headline. Um, the Yesterday's win, Liverpool, with the injury for the goalkeeper, was a little bit of a scary moment. Um, one of the games that I keep hearing, and I probably agree, is that Burnley uh, beats Everton 2-1, which came completely out of the blue. So yeah, there are your main headlights uh, from this weekend. Um, and then in the Eredivisie with a huge game, a really good game, especially the first uh, between PSV and Feyenoord. But the winner of that one is Ajax. Ajax. All Ajax fans are smiling. So I was really thinking of putting on Ajax, putting on Ajax. Let's jump into uh, what happened. But before we go into the weekend game, uh, we also have to say that Manchester City in the midweek had a very easy 5 to win over Southampton with a ridiculous non-call penalty where Foden, you know, if he would have gone down, the penalty would have been given. So, you need to fall to get the penalty. That's what we take, take from it, which only meant that at this point, Manchester City uh, extended their lead over United by three more points, making it a total of 14 points with a game more. We had a Friday evening game, Newcastle, Aston Villa. The goals came late in that. That one, it ends 1-1 with Newcastle uh, equalizing stoppage time. Leeds United, Chelsea, I think was lively for the first 15 minutes and then completely fell apart in many ways. Um, the pitch, dreadful. Uh, I think both teams hit the wall, Woodward. From the highlights, I had the feeling that maybe Leeds was a little bit better, but you know, Chelsea keeps another clean sheet there, and that's probably the, what counts for Thomas Tuchel the most. Uh, Crystal Palace 1 0 over uh, uh, West Brom, have not seen much from there. Everton against Burnley. Uh, Burnley? They're fully deserving that win. I mean, Burnley has not been playing all the, all the greatest of late, but just seeing the highlight, I think there was the Calvert Lewin uh, goal that made it 1 2. At that point, Burnley, as I said, was already two goals up through Chris Wood and McNeil. Fully deserving, so the, the win could be high. And I have personal the feeling that uh, ever since Everton won the Derby, that kind of, yeah, we have achieved our season's goal and also their home form, like Liverpool. What's with the Liverpool teams? Their home form is dreadful. So, yeah. Interesting result uh, and a big win for Burnley, who looked a little bit buried earlier this season, uh, looking rather safe at the moment. Manchester City, yeah, against Fulham. 3 0. Uh, the turn on in the second half, uh, John Stones gets the first one. The goal by Gabriel Jesus is one of those. Uh, Fulham basically shot themselves in the foot of the ball. They want to play it out, it bounces back to Gabriel Jesus, who just runs the keeper and puts it in. And then a penalty for Sergio Aguero. 15 minutes, it's all that it took for them to uh, get the win and keep flying high in the Premier League. Um, next game that we want to talk about is Leicester's 5-0 uh, over Sheffield United. Sheffield United now without Chris Wilder, who I th at first it didn't look good, but uh, the more I hear, hear about it, I mean, he wanted to, he was not very much willing to continue anyway. So I get that whoever is worried about Sheffield, I actually get, get it, because after he had such, such a big figure, leaves such a club, 
Yes, usually only way to go and that's down in the rarest cases you can continue it. It was the Ian Nacho show who scored a hat, hat trick. Um, twice assists by Vardy, once by Ndidi. Um, uh, Jose Perez gets the second goal of, of, of the game and Ampadu Ongol uh, make, makes it 5 0. Uh, it was basically Sheffield United holding, holding tight and then in the end break, breaking apart and Ian Nacho. Maybe there is a real striker in there. Um, of course, the big one was the derby between Arsenal and Tottenham. I think that was the game, even though they're both not uh, fighting at the moment for top four, although you had the feeling that maybe Spurs has a better chance there. Uh, that was, it was the marquee fixture of the weekend. And I actually have to say that match in a way lived up to it. It was not the greatest of matches, but it, it lived up to it. Computer again, making noise. Um, Arsenal being totally better in the first half, uh, hit, hitting once uh, the woodwork and a Spurs just hanging in deep and uh, totally you I, you don't get it why on, 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 honestly because with everyone that they have up front with Son, Kane and Bale you thought they actually could take it to ours, Arsenal who has, who has this very leaky defense but yeah Mourinho decided to dig in and uh, he then blamed the players of not showing up. You know, I think a little bit more positive outlook could have, have helped Spurs a whole lot. Uh, they also get the first blow with uh, Son coming off with a muscle in injury. He might be out for a while and Eric Lamella comes on. And it was the Eric Lamella derby in many ways. Because in the first real uh, positive action for Spurs... Uh, the ball comes over, over the left, it goes um, uh, to, to Lucas who plays to Eric Lamella who the bonus it through the legs of Thomas Partey into the net. That was a goal when I first saw it, I said, oh, this is an interesting shot. I didn't realize it until I think a third or fourth replay what he had done because it's so unfathomable. This is an amazing, amazing goal in the, and especially the amount of power and precision he can put on it. And, you know, by not making uh, Thomas Partey this way, which he would... Yes, he probably could have used the other other foot, but I don't think he would have managed that. An amazing piece of skill, on, on, on honestly. And, uh, and you could see the celebration. Uh, first of all, yeah, I scored against Spurs, uh, I scored against Arsenal. But then you realize he has achieved something absolutely uh, unfathomable in many ways, although he has done it before as well. So really, really, really great, great goal. I cannot praise it enough. However, Arsenal gets a deserved equal. I mean, they hit the, uh, I think Lacazette hit the post uh, one, one time and then uh, Odegaard with a deflected shot gets the equalizer. And the uh, second half kind of petered out a little bit. And the other, and then the really weird thing to me is that he took off Bale, who was really a no-show, but you know, he had already sun out and he bring on a defensive substitution. Yes, then Dombele comes off and Ali come, comes on kind of to a little bit bad balance out. But I actually think the substitutions were a little bit ill-timed. And then uh, Davinson Sanchez mows down Lacazette, uh, who completely misses the shot. He probably got the best out of that one. I still think it's a penalty because the challenge by... Um, Dominic Sanchez was just bad. Uh, I mean, it's a flying challenge. How is the referee not going to look at it? Uh, or see, I mean, if, if, if you decide, uh, if you see this challenge, you will decide for, for a penalty and VAR is not going to overturn because there's a clear con contact there. And like I said, gets a penalty, maybe a little bit lucky one. And then Eric Lamella uh, runs hot and gets himself sent off, especially the second yellow. I mean, with a little bit cooler head, he could have pre prevailed. Um, uh, um, Kane free kick hit the post. Uh, I think Kane also scored a goal that was all, all set. so late on. You thought that Spurs, Spurs only turned off the last 10 minutes, really. Where they were, they were dangerous, but I honestly, it was a little bit too little too late. I would have wished uh, them to be attacking a little bit sooner because I think Arsenal should be well in their reach. But Arsenal, I have to say, the way they played, they completely, fully deserve to win this one. And yeah, they break a losing streak against, Ars against Spurs. And that was also one thing where I thought, yeah, this actually might work out in our Arsenal's favor. You had this losing streak. You, it will not continue this way. Because when you lose five in a row, you might actually 
Uh, not lose, but not win five. I find we actually might pull out something. Uh, Manchester United against West Ham. Um, didn't see much, but from all I can say, all the chances fell to United because West Ham decided, yeah, we're not going to play our usual game against United, who just will sit back and try to counter. Uh, so we sit in deep, and yeah, so you don't have many chance, chances in the end. It's an own goal by Dawson. Yes, McTominay, I think, uh, made the header, but it was uh, deflected into the... Nah, he was celebrating, but uh, it, 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 it was truly, truly an own goal. Um, and that uh, gives the win to United, and West Ham is a little bit stalled. And yesterday in the evening, Wolves uh, play at home to Liverpool. From all I could tell from the three and a half minute highlights, Liverpool had a little bit more of, of, of the game, but were everything but convincing. Um, Diogo Jota, of all players, gets the winning goal right before the halftime. But I think the big story was that Salah would have scored a second one that was not allowed. And at that point, um, the Rui Patrizio gets hit really badly in the head. I mean, for 50 minutes, he had to be treated on the field. Scary, scary scenes. And uh, with a humongous stoppage time, I think it, it went on over 100 minutes, 105 minutes or so. Uh, the game ends 1-0 because at the end, I, I, Silva has a weird miss. I mean, if he used the head, it's a 1-1. The ball falls on the shoulder, which was not the only time I saw this yesterday evening, but that's for another video. With that, in the Premier League, Liverpool actually moves now into sixth spot. Champions League chances, only 20% as good as West Ham. Just let that sink in. Liverpool chance of making top four as good as West Ham's. Chelsea with the draw a little bit stalling, um, but you know, it seems that the top four will be the top four at the end. Um, Midfield, you know, not much happening there either. I mean, Crystal Palace with a rare win getting it, but you know, uh, that's all not, not much. Uh, interesting part is on the bottom where Brighton with a win relieves themselves of some trouble. I mean, Southampton, Burnley and Brighton are uh, technically still in the relegation fight, but I think the teams are good, good enough to stay up there. So it's actually the last spot is between Newcastle and Fulham because West Brom and Sheffield are down. Um, with adjusting, because we have a few uh, things, we see that actually Liverpool will fall down because Everton and Spurs have games in hand. This all will even out now. Uh, you know, with all these cup ac actions, the schedule for, 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 for the Premier League is always a little bit crazy. Um, Leeds United will also go ahead of Crystal Palace. And on the bottom is Newcastle just barely ahead of Fulham at, at the moment. Expectations just reflect reflect well, well, what I, I just said. The top four pretty much seems sad in stone with just minimal chance for Liverpool and West Ham to go in there. Then the midfield, I mean, there's a clear cut after Aston Villa between top half and bottom half. And the final relegation was between Fulham and, New and Newcastle, I think. A lot more needs to be said there. Uh, we have some Premier League action in um, on the weekend. Uh, we have the remaining fixtures of round 29, which are three. And the Spurs-Southampton game was postponed. Um, because uh, of the League Cup final, blah, blah, blah. And we also have from round 18 a makeup game. And now Spurs comes in to play against Aston Villa. So uh, Spurs will play there. And why do we have so little Premier League games? Because we have the FA Cup quarterfinals from Saturday to Sunday. With the big one definitely between Leicester City and Manchester United. That's three versus two. I don't expect necessarily a good game. And then Everton against Manchester City. If Manchester City wasn't in there, I, I would say the competition to me looks wide open. I mean, we have all top four still in there but honestly this will be Manchester City's to lose again. Um, in the Eredivisie and before we go into the weekend there was a makeup game between Fenlo and Sparta which of his, is of the round where there was so, there was so much snowfall uh, in the Netherlands and also in Germany which actually meant that Sparta could actually go a little bit ahead and this is the only thing we will talk about the mid table and lower regions of the Eredivisie because now let's move into the big games this weekend. Interesting results. Uh, AZ 4 1 over 20. Um, we had Vitesse beating Utrecht, but the game was def the game was definitely PSV against Feyenoord with an absolutely uh, highly entertaining first half. PSV within 10 minutes should have been up by 2-0. Uh, they had really big chances and with the first uh, attack Sinistera plays a ball to Berghuis who puts it out from outside the box. At that point then Feyenoord 
was the better team and had, I mean, once really missing the open goal, I think it was Sinistera, it should have been 2 deal and they ride in this uh, path. Uh, part of, of, the, of the game where Feyenoord seems, seems to be the better team. Mario Götze plays a wonderfully timed chip ball into Daniel Marlen, who with the outside of this also lifts it over the goalkeeper into the net to make it 1-1. Second half, not as good as the first one. The first half, I mean, uh, could easily have ended 3-3, 4-4. It was that good of a half. And I, I actually was happy that I stayed with that game and didn't switch, switch over to uh, I think it was Bilbao against Celta or whatever. Um, I thought this was really, really exciting. As I said, second half fell a little, a little bit off. More chances definitely to PSV, uh, who probably should have won that, that one to give themselves a fighting chance. But with that draw, there's only one winner, and that's Ajax, uh, who played a little bit around against Zwolle, scored twice. Uh, great shot by David Neres, and then the, sec the second goal by Talia Fico is a typical Ajax. Uh, offensive action where uh, they stifle the opposition who wants to play out, uh, get, get get the ball played, played around and tell if he can make makes it 2 0 played home safely uh, after that. So they are with that draw now, uh, Ajax uh, more or less champions, 100%. It's not quite 100, but uh, they, they're more or, less uh, more or less champions. PSV also relatively safe in the second spot, which, which means uh, Champions League qualification round. Um, Ajax has a game in hand, but that uh, will not change much in the, in the adjusted standing. And also, if you look at the expected standings, the fight is really for this uh, Europa League or Europa Conference League uh, qual qualification round, where there's a little bit of tussle, especially for the remaining two spots. Uh, I think there are a few um, teams that could go in there. And uh, yeah, that seems like set on a third spot, although I think Fairnet is not a bad team and Vitesse also had a good season. Um, we have another big one, AZ against PSV, coming up on Sunday. So that's the big game there. And then a big rival between, uh, but you know, uh, Ajax against Den Haag. Den Haag is just nowhere at, at, at the moment, so I expect an easy win there. So that was it from me for this week. Let me know what you thought about the games that we've been talk, talking about, or you want to add any, anything to the two leagues. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoy this video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see more. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.